So what is going on guys, welcome back to the channel. So hopefully you enjoyed those uh, skating clips. You know, it's been a minute since I've uh, filmed some skating on my channel. And the main reason being that I just don't have anybody to film and uh, it has been summer out here. So it's a little hot out here in Arizona to be out there filming skating by myself. Um, although I do try and get out at least once a week. So just know that I, I, still, I still skate. I still think about skating all the time. Um, but yeah, so Today is part four, uh, a little update on the turbo build. So we are almost there. If you guys saw a few videos ago, the monsoons took my big old canopy thing away around this thing. So I went to Tractor Supply or uh, shoppers and they had some tarps on sale, two bucks or three bucks a piece. So about three of them, stretched them over, hung them up. So now I got some shade to work in, which is good because it's high humidity today because I don't know if you see that storm but it's like 103 and that storm, so it's pretty pretty nasty today. But yeah, we are kind of at a partial standstill here with the turbo build, and uh, I still got a little bit of work that I can do, but yeah, at a standstill for the moment. So basically what uh, I'm waiting on is a new manifold because a lot of you guys rose concern about not being able to run a filter. You all made a valid point and I was already concerned with that in the first place. So I went ahead and I could run a uh, pole style uh, slave cylinder, which maybe if it fits there. But you know, for me the easier thing to do and the same price was a new manifold. So it's not a cast one. I got a like a ram style, but it's it's a T2 flange, so I won't have to run this adapter here, so that's good. Um, but that'll tuck the turbo up a few inches higher, which means this will clear. And that also means that my oil drain line will be able to clear better. And I noticed a couple of you guys rose concerned about my, my uh, feed line as is. This is not how I intend to run it. I just didn't cut the hose yet because I don't know where the turbo is going to sit on the new thing. And uh, yeah, so this is just here so I don't get dirt here. Don't get dirt in here or anything because I have a dirt yard and dirt blows around. So don't trip. This is not how this is staying. This is just just sitting here. But uh, actually one of the things I got to do today is uh, oil pan gasket. Got this ready. Just got to slap it on, you know. I don't know, something like that. I did get my gauges for the most part sorted out. Oh, there's my hat. Um, I was out here working last night, so yeah, let me show you. Kind of. This is a pretty popular Del Sol mod to do or taking out the clock, which also has the roof uh, indicator and all that stuff. I really like that. That's my favorite part of the cluster, so I didn't want to do that. Uh, these vents are cheap and easy. I just need to get something to make it actually stay like in there. I might need some tape or something. Uh, as for the gauges, I got them all wired up, almost. I do have to just kind of tuck the wiring on. That's going to be a pain in the butt. But my issue right now is that I accidentally, because I, I combined these two harnesses. Yeah, so I conjoined these two harnesses, made a jumper or whatever, um, piggybacked them as you would call it. But I was mistaken on the fuse box and now I got to basically find a different fuse source for my uh, switched 12 volts. I have the constant 12 volts in the right spot, but I need the switched. So the AFR works. Um, oh, there's my keys too, that's nice. But yeah, so my AFR works and uh, whatnot. Uh, I have to wait for the, I have to hook the sensor up, but I can't weld the, or I can't put the sensor in until I make my down pipe. Uh, so I can weld the bung on, but I can't make my down pipe until I get the new manifold put on so I know, you know, how everything's gonna sit. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this oil pan again. It's just held up by a few bolts right now. Slap this gasket on it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish wiring up the gauges. I'll try and film some of that. It's just more or less just gonna be crawling under the dash for hopefully not long because it's uh, tight and it's hot. But yeah, uh, get that done and then see where we are from there. So this is my uh, switch source right here for uh, my boost gauge and my uh, oil pressure gauge. So there's a series of output sources up there for the fuses. One on the all the way to the left is the constant 12, which is tapped into with this yellow wire. And the one all the way on the right is switched. And the middle ones I thought were switched, but they are not. But my switched one is tapped into for my AFR. So uh, instead of piggybacking with that, because I already soldered that all up and it's really thick wire and it was a pain in the butt, I'm gonna go ahead and tap this in with this inline or with this uh, little fuse thingy holder. Uh, this is for my under dash lights, which I have, my under, under dash neons. So I'm gonna go ahead and just 
pull this connector off and I'm going to piggyback it with the underdash neons. So I'm gonna twist these together and then uh, solder it in with this and then this will just go in the fuse spot and this already has uh, some 10 amp fuses so that way, you know, shouldn't have any issues with over surging or overpowering or anything. And uh, obviously fuses will blow before anything else hopefully melts or catches fire. And once that is done, then I can plug it back in. Then I should have working power to all my gauges. And then I can start zip tying this all up and getting rid of all this excess that I gotta try and tuck up here. So that's gonna be a real pain in the butt. Change my mind on soldering it because uh, this, is, this might not work and this is a bit of a pain in the butt. So I'll just go ahead and butt connect this right now. All right, so let's uh, plug this up quick. Make sure it actually doesn't melt my car. Let's give it some power. All right, we're working. All is well. Sweet. So the gauges are finally wired in. I just wrapped some electrical tape around the uh, around them to keep them more a little bit more tight in here. They're still a little loose, but I guess it's to be expected. This one, I'm just gonna put a little dab of super glue there uh, just to hold it, and then whenever I need to take that out again, you know, just use a razor blade, cut the super glue. Only thing really is I just gotta drill a hole or find a hole to feed this uh, vacuum line through. I don't know if I have enough to stretch over to the other side where I have the holes or the wires going through the uh, drain line area but I might just have to drill a little hole in the firewall above my pedals and try and run this. But other than that, gauges are totally good to go. So stoked on that. Got them all tucked up pretty nice, actually. Um, as nice as I can get it, the wiring at least. So uh, that's good. Try and run this vacuum line and then start on the oil pan. Got the oil pan off. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick some of the, this is basically just off-brand Honda Bond that you get from like O'Reilly's. It's Permatex Ultra Gray. And yeah, just go ahead and stick some in between here and in the corners, so that way the gasket hopefully stays. I've never had good luck with oil pan gaskets, no matter how I do them, so probably gonna have to end up redoing it anyway. Yeah, try and slap this on quick. All right, so it's uh, pretty much on there. Um, Honda Bond will help hold it in place a little bit. And I'll just go bolt it back up and you want to hand tighten it and then leave it for a little bit and then go up and torque it. And the torque is really low. I, I forget, I have to look up the specs, but um, yeah, I just know to do it hand tight, cross hatch, you know, cross hatch pattern, and uh, then come back a little bit later and finish it. All right, so I got the oil pan on and uh, it is good to go. I, uh, I just snugged it down hand tight for now and I'll come back and uh, torque it down here in a little bit. So. I got my vacuum line ran through the firewall. That was a pain in the butt, so I'm just about to start working on that. Uh, thinking about going to the manifold on the back here and then just temporarily disconnect the charcoal canister. I'm gonna probably right before, right after I get tuned, go to full race and pick up a vacuum block because they're on sale right now. They're like 45 bucks and I mean, yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be good for me so that way I can run all my vacuum lines. I don't have to worry about issues, hopefully, um, but for now, just so I can get all my routing done, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to the intake manifold and then tee it off or whatever and then run one up to the uh, blow off valve and then run one to the wastegate. So my my thing is uh, that I, every turbo that I've seen like this, um, there's a flange or a nipple on the uh, turbo where you hook up the wastegate to. This one does not have that. So kind of confused there. Think I'm just supposed to tee it in with the rest of it like normal, but I honestly don't know. So bringing this into the next day now, which is, I don't know, today is Labor Day Monday. Uh, today I'm gonna be doing the uh, fuel pump and wiring in the resistor box and installing the 550cc injectors. So AD and Ammon are on their way over right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get the seeds ripped out. I'm pretty sure on the Del Sols, um, you don't have to drop the tank. I'm pretty sure there's an access point for the fuel pump behind the rear like plastic. So I'm gonna take the seats out, get the roof off, make it all easy. So that way when AD shows up, uh, should be a pretty quick 
install. I'm not going to waste a bunch of time filming everything, um, but I will kind of show you guys how to hook up the fuel pump because I'm learning while we're doing this too. I've only done like two fuel pumps before, a Blazer and like a Cavalier, so I've never done a Honda fuel pump. So it's supposed to be really easy, but since AD already knows how to do it, I'd rather just have him show me. Um, that way I don't mess anything up and we know it gets done right the first time. Got the rear plastics out of the way now. So if any of you guys don't know how to take this out, if you're a Del Sol guy, you got two Phillips head screws in each compartment, and then you got these uh, four clips. I'm missing one right here, but four clips on the back. So got to remove this top piece right here, this top panel, which is just clipped in. Uh, it's sitting right here. And then, yeah, the four screws, four clips, comes out. And you can access the fuel pump from right there. Now that these dudes are here, he's uh, kind of trimming up some wiring, and uh, I'll look at that in a second, but for now, I'm going to start on the fuel pump, so I'll go ahead and get this all taken off, and then uh, it's supposed to be plug and play, so we'll find out here in a sec. So I got the six bolts, six bolts off, and the electrical connector trying to do right now. And so connectors off. Uh, I guess just take this one off and move this hose out of the way and this whole piece obviously is going to pull up like that. I can hear it moving around. So I'm going to do that, try and not make a mess. Super janky. Ow! Oh! Just freaking guillotine my rib cage. With All I gotta do now is fucking... Oh, sorry about the language. Uh, it's go through here and then take these off. Or back probe them figure out which wire goes to what injector, and then these go to each injector, and these go to the rest. Whatever goes to this gang connection. Gang gang? Gang gang. But yeah. That's it, folks. That's, That's an eight, eight pin. Eight yeah, pin. that should work. I gotta yeah. do... Deep in them? Yeah. Just cut it, cut it no, and deep in it? No, you have to cut it. That way you can save it. All right, so I got it all uh, disconnected and I'm gonna hopefully not make it too big of a mess. Go for it. Wait, was that camera going? I was talking about late. <laughs> yeah, I'll cut that out. Okay. All right, uh, okay, so I see now how it sits, so. Uh, it should have the same connection. It's pulling out. Yeah, I just was trying to not drip it everywhere. So I'm gonna have to reuse the sock because the sock that I have does not, uh, or <laughs> the fuel pump I have doesn't have the freaking sock, so. Yeah, should be good to just uh, reinstall. Sorry. Mine had no gas in it, so it was easy. Well, I got a three-quarter tank, so. <laughs> <laughs> Mine had been sitting for years. It was completely dry. So had some people asking about how your Civic's coming along. Right, it's coming. Um, We're just waiting on a head right now. Waiting yeah, on it's a head. Because uh, either I'm going to buy a head from... Uh, one of Chris's connections, or I got to get ahead from junkyard, and junkyard, have a deck, and everything else. So basically, I don't know if Chris explained it. My heads, my heads from a '98 automatic Civic, and '98 and '99, I believe it is, or '97, '99. Anyway, that head was different than any other uh, Y8 head. Yeah, and we served. I think automatic. I said in the yeah, it was originally automatic. Yeah, I think I said last video we checked like five different junkyards last weekend and checked 20 plus Civics and we found one that had the same head and the guys were walking away with it. And then I, so I went on Honda Motors online to see if I could order the parts for it and then we checked every single model and we couldn't find it so then I asked them the question and they told me that it's been discontinued. So to find a part for it is gonna be a junkyard and if I'm lucky it's just not worth my time. Yeah, so this car is almost done it's just just waiting right now. I hope so. He went to school for it. What's happening? <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm a professional. <laughs> That's true. There's a lot of questionable people who went there. I believe you. Robert called me a professional welder because I get paid to weld, so I'm technically a pro, uh, even though I'm not certified. Fucker work. I ain't getting paid for this. So. <laughs> you get paid with Sprite, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> we found this plug and just put the pins in it. So, so we don't have to cut any wires at all on the original harness. It's just plug and play. And if you're curious to figure out which ones go to the injectors, it, since this is a female plug, you gotta look at the back, it's these four on this side. The two top and two bottom go, one each goes to each injector. That's it. <laughs> it pays to, 
pays to read a book and to keep extra parts laying around. All right, so I'm just working on the injectors right now. Uh, we ran into a little bit of an issue with the fuel pump. I don't know where yeah. it went. Uh, we were trying don't to put worry the about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were trying to put the sock on, and it just wasn't cooperating. And so then you know when you don't know what you're doing. So skunk too. You want to help him out? You can uh, hook us up. Yeah, we. I broke the end off of this because I dropped it. <laughs> so skunk two's watching. So I'm just hooking up the injectors right now. Um, they're just a direct plug and play. AD already got the resistor box wired up, so I'm gonna just have to tuck this on the side of the shock tower. So I'm just use self tapper and screw it in. But yeah, injectors are just where'd they go? Straight plug and play. I had one out here to put in the bag. Yeah. So just as is, straight smack it in there. Should be good. Now the injectors are all good. We had to end up stealing some of the studs from the D15 over there to mount the rail on. And then got the resistor box all wired up, so AD did a really good job on that. And I just mounted it here, because there was an open bolt hole. So that's pretty much all we can do for the day. So I think I'm gonna end up uh, calling this a video now. Gross, spider webs. So uh, fuel pump will be here in a few days, manifold will be here tomorrow. So uh, yeah, by this the end of this weekend, I should definitely be ready to make some choo-choo noises and then I just gotta wait for some money. Um, to get the tune done. Right there, just a clamp, two water lines, trim, a, trim the drain line, slap the radiator in, fill it with fluids, put the fuel pump in, and we're good. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to consider subscribing, you know, stick around, maybe check it out, uh, sit to the end, check out some of my other stuff. And uh, next video, I'm hoping I'll be able to, obviously, mount the manifold that'll be here tomorrow. Today's Labor Day, so no mail today, obviously. Um, so it'll be here tomorrow, so hopefully Wednesday after I do some detail work with my brother to get some extra cash, I'll come home and I will get the new manifold installed and then I can start working on fabbing up my downpipe and the fuel pump, the replacement fuel pump, uh, should be here I think Thursday, so got the resistor box mounted up like I think I just showed, but yeah, so that was pretty much all we did today, but you know, it was good, good time, thanks AD for helping me out with wiring and it's, it's cool about the fuel pump, it was free to me, it's not a big deal. Um, just sets me back a few more days but I mean I have to wait anyway since I'm out of money and I can't really get the water lines made as is uh, so yeah by this weekend end of this weekend this car should be ready for the dyno maybe minus the water lines that might be my only hold up but either way I don't have the money for the dyno for a few more weeks yet anyway so um, I could still fire it up without the water line though but anyways guys do what you love free with the rest see you in the next one peace out